G'day. I'm going to do a little mini tutorial on how to create a time lapse using LR time lapse. I'm going to skip large parts of it because actually a lot of the process is waiting. I'll put in little captions to be like, and now we wait 10 minutes. Anyhow, I'm going to copy the files from my card to a folder on my external hard drive. So I always take a bunch of black frames after I've sorted out the shot so I can know where to start. There should be 500 images in this group. There's 501. That means one of them isn't part of the set. Anyhow, uh, it's going to copy and take about five minutes, so I'll be back when that's done. Files are copied. I opened up Lightroom, hit import, find where they are. I put them on my external drive under time lapses for today's date. Okay, I'm just going to hit import, and once these are imported, I will be back. Okay, now the import just finished. I'm going to switch over to LR time lapse. Find the folder. Once it has loaded, we should have the keyframes wizard available. It's the top row. I always use the visual workflow tab, although there are reasons to use the other ones and I have never had them. I don't know why I'm waffling. Okay, it's almost done. Hit the keyframes wizard. Because this one was sunset, I'm going to probably put in five keyframes. Uh, see the line going down here? That's an estimation, and it's got to be able to change in between them. Hopefully five is enough. If it's not, we'll come back and do it again. We hit save. Okay. Control A, Command A, right click. Metadata, read metadata from files. And, and now we wait. This could take a minute or two. So I'm gonna stop the video and be back. The metadata has reloaded. I'm gonna filter by the keyframes so I only see the keyframes. We can see it gets progressively darker. First I'll edit the first one. I did actually notice that it's not in focus, which is not great, but oh well. Oh, it's got a white point. A little black. I might pop a bit of color in it. Ah, one thing I noticed sense of dust. And I think this bit at the bottom is always going to be in shadow. I don't know if it's worth lifting it, but I don't really want to make this building down here the focus, even though it's in the foreground. It's more the tip of Sutro Tower and the hillside. So once this is done, go back to the grid view, make sure the first is selected, highlight the rest, go to scripts, 
and sync the keyframes. Always use the script to sync the keyframes for LR time lapse. Go to the second one, make edits as you see fit. I think I'm going to brighten this one just a little bit. Maybe lift the shadows just a little bit. Black's kind of got crushed there. There we go. Maybe toss in a wee bit more saturation. Slight dehaze. Back to develop mode. Uh, grid mode, I mean. Select that one and the ones after it only. Sync keyframes. Develop the third one. Oh, look, the moon is peeking out right there. Huh, I guess I caught the moonrise accidentally. Might have to make a separate time lapse with that. Anyhow, I don't really want to brighten it because it is nighttime. I don't think I want to do anything to this one. I was going to cool it down a bit, but it is sunset, so it's supposed to be kind of orange. Like how here we're getting into evening more. I don't think I'm going to change this one either. Finally, this one's actually nighttime and oh, there's plane. Sometimes I edit out planes, but I thought it might add some interest. There's no clouds. Bizarre. It was completely fogged in until about six o'clock and then it was completely gone. It went from thick fog to nothing in about an hour. So, there we have all the keyframes. I don't think I'm going to brighten. Maybe just a, maybe just a little. There we go. Go back to the grid. Don't have to sync it since it's the last one. Highlight them all. And <laughs> save metadata to file. Go back to LR time lapse. Reload. You can always use the holy grail wizard, but I didn't go all the way to night time. I do want to kind of make it show, make it obvious that it gets darker. I'm going to hit auto transition. Now theoretically, I might like to make visual previews for these, but I think it's going to be okay. I mean. It didn't change dramatically. It was very gradual. There's a blip here. I'm not quite sure what that is, but anyway. So let's save those changes. Did I do that? Oh, well, let's do it again. And go back to Lightroom. Now we want to look at all the keyframes. Select them all. Metadata. Read metadata from files. And this will load. It will take a little while, so we'll be back shortly. Metadata has been reloaded, so now we're ready to export. Ah, this is important. And I forgot. Right click on a file. Go to folder in library. I don't know why I always forget that one. Hit export. I usually do the 4K. I'm not um, pro level. I only have the private version, so I can't use the other two anyway. I pick 4K, JPEG. This is the place I usually save it to. This is the app file or exe. I set it to overwrite if I'm not paying attention, which is pretty much all the time. And now, this is the longest part of the process. I think maybe importing? No, exporting is longer. So, we'll be back once the export's done. As soon as the export is done, it opens LR time lapse. This rendering window, I'm going to leave almost everything the same for this 
time I usually go half speed because you'll see 500 images will only make about 30 seconds at half time it only make 15 seconds otherwise hit render video and we wait again if you haven't noticed there is a lot of and you click that button and then wait. <laughs> Sometimes I spend a lot longer in the develop mode. Um, it really depends how the light was, what kind of images they are, but often these are images I've done many times, so I pretty much know how they're gonna turn out. Anyhow, it is rendering and when it is done, we'll be able to see the finished product. Now the render is complete. This is the video right here. And instead of playing you the video and you watching it on my screen, I'm going to insert it into this video. Okay, as you saw, there was some flickering near the beginning, and I should probably make a follow-up video talking about how to get rid of that, because a lot of time-lapse lets you do that. It's very fancy. Anyway, I won't include that in this video. Thanks for learning something with me. Please like and subscribe.